Welcome to Soho Strangler Week by Murdermile. To accompany the series, here's a few extra details from the police files and the court records to aid your enjoyment and maybe even help you crack the case. This episode is about how commonplace the murder of prostitutes is. It's kind of interesting when you look at something like Jack the Ripper, if you didn't know true crime and you looked at the the, the amount of coverage it gets, you would assume that that is the only time in history when prostitutes were murdered. But unfortunately, that's, that's far from true. 37% of those murdered in the United Kingdom are associated with the sex trade. So if you are a prostitute or an escort girl or anything like that, it's it's highly likely that you will be a victim of murder. But also, because of the clandestine nature of the crime, uh, clandestine nature of the sex trade, um, it's less likely that your murder will ever be solved. So it's unfortunately, it's incredibly common. It's too more common than any other member of society, except uh, those who are under the age of one. Unfortunately, they are the they are the the category of victim that is the highest. They're, they're more murdered than any other uh, section of society. That wasn't even good English there, but you know what I'm talking about. Second is prostitutes. Um, and it's kind of tragic in a way that uh, I hate to use the word fallen women. I'm, I'm using air quotes around that, but no one seems to care about a murdered prostitute. You can kind of see it with Jack the Ripper, where, the way these women have been kind of cast aside and all we care about is their name, age, collection of injuries. And they are really just a prop in order to guide us towards the mystery of who this serial killer could be. But it's... Um, in a way, when you look at it, and you can kind of see that with uh, you can kind of see that with the earlier victims of Jack the Ripper, and you can see that the same with the Soho Strangler as well, uh, with French Fifi, that if her death could have been entirely forgotten about, it, you can see it in the press, you get a sense of it. They're really not that interested. They're they're putting across the basic information because that's what they have to do, but they're not really that interested, and that's kind of the tragedy of it is that if she's murdered it's almost forgotten and everyone kind of demonizes her and says well it's her choice you know she decided to become a prostitute which is entirely incorrect whereas if she's murdered by a serial killer she becomes immortalized forever why why is it that we choose to remember some victims but not others and i think i i think as people who kind of love true crime it's it's kind of important for us to admit that we're responsible for this as well because we make the decision about what is what goes out on television what goes out what is presented in books because if you think about it if you watch something and it's a success you it's a success not because it's great it's a success because lots of people watch it a book is a success because lots of people buy it but if we choose not to buy a certain book we choose not to watch something on telly it 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 won't get made a gun again people will go "Eh, that's not going to work is it so we are as much responsible for this so how we digest this information and um the more that we can kind of accept the fact well not really accept the fact the more that we understand the fact that the murder of prostitutes it unfortunately is all too common and it's not just related to things like Jack the Ripper, the Blackout Ripper, the Soho Strangler, uh, Yorkshire Ripper, Suffolk Strangler. It's not contained into those little bubbles. Unfortunately, it's very, very regular. Um, So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to focus on some other murders of prostitutes, mostly focusing in and around London, but to show that even though we had the Soho Strangler and even though there are connections, the whole point about the series was, are they connected? Are they not connected? Are we just grasping at straws? Are we really just looking for connections? Why? Because that's what we do. We want to solve a mystery. I know that I'm recording this at the moment and only episode seven has gone out yet. And I know that by the time we get to episode the, episode 10, the final episode, people will go, oh, I don't like unsolved things. And it's like, well, life is like that, isn't it? Not everything is nice. Not everything you can put into little boxes. So, unfortunately, with the Soho Stranglers case, things just, it it didn't wrap up. I've taken it as far as I can, but um, 
the murder of prostitutes there's so there's so many and so many of them are unsolved but it doesn't mean that they're connected um now if we look at blackout ripper so we've done the 10 part series on the blackout ripper four women murdered two attempted murders in four days uh, horrific mutilation horrific deaths i would probably say he uh, it was some kind of copycat of jack the ripper he wanted he wanted jack the ripper's kind of notoriety why because he was a sad pathetic man who hadn't really achieved anything uh, why do we not know about the blackout ripper well we can see a sense of this through the soho strangler in the fact that we were in the precursor to war wars on the horizon uh if you know your world war ii history you would think oh god there were certain key moments and that's why the war happened but unfortunately uh a lot of leaders a lot of generals were spoiling for a fight for at least a decade before so it was on the horizon it was going to happen um soho strangler was building up to that that's why the the kind of the press and the people weren't really that interested in this exciting story jack the ripper era not really a lot going on you've got the birth of tabloid coming through you've got you've got um what you've got compulsory education for everyone including working class people so you've got new younger generation coming through who can read you've got tabloid being created for these working class people whereas newspapers prior to that were more kind of a um uh, for the elite i hate to use the word elite let's just say toss pots uh for overprivileged toss pots whereas do you know this was kind of for a, a newer uh less literate generation so you had more you tended to have more headlined you needed to have grabby headlines you couldn't have really boring long columns with if you read old newspapers have a if you can have a look at old newspapers and you'll find there's no headlines it's all very very dull long columns and I struggle when I do research looking at old newspapers and go where's the story because there's no headlines it's all just sentences paragraphs wedged together whereas with the birth of tabloid they started to use headlines sublines they would use uh kind of break sentences in between paragraphs like they just say a Jew, a black man, and you go, oh, interesting. I'm, I'm definitely going to read. I'm going to keep reading. That was the whole idea. And they'd have drawings, they'd have photographs. Um, so um, that was Jack the Ripper. That's kind of why Jack the Ripper. Re it, it was the right murders for the right moment. It's kind of it was the birth of tabloid. Blackout Ripper, World War Two. We were full into the Blitz um i think one of the reasons why the blackout ripper isn't known because the case was solved if you listen back to the series it was a series of four murders uh over four days by the time we got to the thursday when he committed his last murder he was arrested on the friday um the press only started to piece together things on the friday as the police had so by that point what can they do they can't really they can't really go oh it could be this man it could be that man it's they have a man he's been arrested within less than three months he had already gone to trial he'd had his appeal he'd been executed job done and it was wartime people were moving on um same with soho strangler um birth of it wasn't really the birth but kind of we just got the start of television television uh, the BBC had had a remit to create TV programmes for, I think it was about a year prior to that. The first routine, the first regular TV programmes were just about to start. So TV was in its infancy. Radio was huge. Uh, as you've seen with uh, French Marie, um, detective uh, magazines were kind of all the rage around that moment. If you look at all the films that are out uh, around the time of the 1930s, it's all crime films. People love true crime. So it was, it was massive. It was mass media organisations, films, there's radio, there's press, there's books, there's everything. Also, by this point, the uh, the audience, unlike Jack the Ripper era, where people, let's let's try and be kind, um, people were less savvy. I was, I'm not going to say thick. It's just um, by the 1930s and 40s, and there's a real difference. If you watch films of the 1940s to films now, they're entirely different. They're very simple in the 1930s and 40s, uh, but the audience were far more savvy than they were in the 1880s um so audiences were able to distinguish the fact the, the difference between when they're being 
spun a lie uh, or, or, or when they're being led down a path that was, it might not be true but people love to be entertained so um so it's interesting which cases involving the murder of prostitutes don't let's let's remember throughout that not all of these women were prostitutes so i'm just going to say i'm just going to say women but most of these cases are cases involving women some women who were prostitutes some who weren't some who were casual prostitutes as well so blackout ripper we've got that that was a case almost entirely forgotten um john reginald christie 10 Wellington place so that's a fascinating story but again see that's infamous today but it was only really became infamous after the film and after uh ludovic kennedy's book as well so the problem was the same with the same with uh, the blackout ripper most of these women weren't reported missing um it only really became famous when the body was found um he went missing and then they arrested him and that's when it started to become really exciting um so because most of the work was done the press really couldn't create a myth around it they couldn't really say here was a monster what could he be like oh he's probably got like jutting teeth and crazy eyes and things like that it's they got a photograph of him he was a, a man who was five foot eight balding not particularly attractive you know case closed there he is uh, so they kind of made the most of what they could later moving into the 1960s so that was 1940s and 50s moving into the 1960s we've got jack the stripper uh, jack the stripper is one of those cases that's still unsolved today um one day because it is in my patch i am hoping to do jack the stripper but the problem is the original court records and the police files are still held for another 30 years so i do put in my freedom of information request but it's not gonna it's not gonna happen so um with jack the stripper we have uh, seven known victims in and around um hammersmith area they, they came from hammersmith brentford chiswick acton mortlake all around the area all were strangled um all found naked in the river thames or, or most as um that's still unsolved today um uh, most as far as we know were prostitutes as well so um these are all connected and we know they're connected because we were able to uh piece together all of the evidence at the time and say that these women were connected but not all, it, it's interesting isn't it it's with the soho strangler you could say yes they're connected because we've got the the correlation between how they were murdered you know nobody saw the the killer go in or out there was no uh, disturbance of the room there was no obvious robbery there was no sexual assault um there was a punch to the face first there was a strangulation which didn't appear to be premeditated because he hadn't brought a weapon with him so he used what was available in the room um and there was there didn't seem to be any mutilation of the body with the exception of dutch layer where he got the half kilo uh flat iron and beat her around the head why it could have been anger but it could have been that maybe uh this is my my theory um because he used stockings with the first two and stockings are very malleable you can do, not that i know this you can tie this tie them around someone's neck um you can pull it really tight it's it, it uh, nylons uh really hold their shape really well they kind of hold the position you could you could tie a knot at the end um as with uh i think it was french marie it was a half hitch knot which basically when it's tied off you can hold it with one hand and it, it, it holds the tension in the neck it keeps it tight so good for suicide but also good for uh, murder as well um but with dutch layer because it was an electrical flex and an electrical flex unfortunately isn't as flexible um when it was put around her neck he he could be he could be a she uh didn't tie it off therefore it's likely um given the fact that there was mucus in her throat and blood in her throat as well and she was still breathing and probably wasn't fully unconscious it's likely that she gained some kind of uh, consciousness started to scream he grabbed whatever was near the uh the uh, one kilo flat iron was it wasn't hers but it came with the flat the landlord had left it there as he'd left many other things uh, and that was used to beat her around the head i be i believe possibly she was trying to scream so uh so i'm just having a swig of lem sip because i'm uh i've got a bit of a cold coming on as you can probably hear um 
so so with the with the Soho Strangler murders they could be connected they might not be connected I, I think that's what I tried to get across in the episode is not to take everything on face value same with Jack the Ripper we we talk about inverted commas the canonical five but everyone who has a theory about Jack the Ripper will say oh well it was this one this one and this one but it wasn't that one Do you know they cherry pick some people say it was five some people say it was three victims some will say it was seven when i used to do my tours i used to do i used to say you know jack the ripper there's 106 current suspects of who could be jack the ripper um and he, he killed his he killed anywhere between three and 23 different victims and each week someone would say oh i think it was eight do you know they'd always come up with something different why because you can kind of with jack the ripper you can cherry pick soho strangler um they could be connected they might not be connected but there were other murders around that time so in between dutch layer and uh french marie so 13th of may 1937 racina fields over in islington green so islington green is not too far from where french marie was murdered it's half a mile maybe a mile which which is you know within walking distance uh rosina was strangled to death she was found in a tin box in the basement of a building she'd been murdered by a man called fred murphy that would be proven later on murphy had before been charged with the murder of a prostitute in oldgate whose throat had been cut that particular case was discontinued after the main witness disappeared uh, for the murder of rosina murphy he was executed at pentonville so <coughs> given the fact that she was a prostitute in the local area and she had been strangled was that connected was it not i mean i mean we've got dutch layer there's differences there with her being beaten around the head so why is uh the other victim being uh, having their throat cut why is that not connected as well so it could easily be um one of the cases that i've i'm hoping to bring to murder mile soon is on the 22nd of february 1932 dora lloyd over in maida vale she was a west end prostitute and she was strangled in her own flat uh, i'm still trying to get the um the original court records of that it's proving a, a little bit problematic um moving into the 1940s i think we, we still have some more 19 no all in the 1940s uh kathleen higgins again this is hopefully coming to murder mile soon last time i went into the archives i booked out this file was very excited look looking forward to piecing it all together i'd done my research in advance the file is missing really annoying uh kathleen higgins was found in winfield house so that's regent's park uh so not too far away kathleen was found strangled with a scarf her nickels her knickers lay on the lower part of her legs there'd been an attempt at sexual intercourse before the attack kathleen could only be identified three days after she was found um let's not also let's also not forget uh if you go back to episode eight and nine rachel annie fennick alias ginger ray at 46 broadwick street that was uh 26th of september 1948 so late 1940s and interestingly with with ginger ray uh with uh, dora friedman who we're going to mention shortly and rita green uh, and margaret cook as well who we covered as well um i was going to put this into the soho strangler case and originally anyone who came on my really 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 early murder mile walks back in the back in 2015 2016 the original early ones because that's where i pieced together all of the the early part of the soho strangler information that went on the tour that was in there but originally in the night late 1940s uh, the press started to make a connection between another series of murders of prostitutes in and around the Soho area. And they said, oh, the Soho Strangler returns. Oh, it's really exciting. So uh, Ginger Ray was there. That's 26th of September, 1948. Uh, Dora Friedman, Russian Dora. I'm, her file is still held. Uh, myself and uh, a member of her family have been piecing together bits and pieces over the years. So I've building a file but there's not enough for an episode uh, she was murdered 5th of september 1948 so three weeks earlier uh rita green uh also known as black rita at 42 rupert street so that's just south of archer street where uh, Fre uh french fifi was murdered that was the 8th of september 1947 just a year earlier um 
And then a year before that, Margaret Cook on Carnaby Street, which we covered, I think that's episode 13. So um, the the press said that these four murders were all connected. And unfortunately, they said, um, this is the return of the Soho Strangler. And oh, it's meant to be really exciting. Problem is, Ginger Ray was stabbed to death. Uh, Russian Dora was stabbed to death as well uh, with a carving knife. Uh, Rita Green was shot in the stomach. Uh, some people believe that she was uh, a police informer. Uh, Margaret Cook, again, she was shot. So um, not really a Soho Strangler, really, is it? Which is why the, why the story failed. There wasn't really a hell of a lot going on. War was over. People were trying to get their lives back together. There was still rationing going on. People wanted a bit of a distraction. But also by this point... People weren't that interested in murder anymore. Murder, and sorry if my uh, blowy nose annoys people. Um, <laughs> interest in true crime only really seems to happen when we're at a relative area of peace in the world. When we've when we kind of need distractions from our everyday dull life. Whereas when you've World War Two, when you've got death on your doorstep surrounding you day and night. You don't want to come home and read about true crime. I know right now someone is going, I would. You wouldn't. Because why? Because we're living in a time at the moment, fingers crossed, uh, of relative peace. But if war were to come, as as in World War Two, as with the Blitz, where every day you don't know whether you're going to leave your front door and get blown to pieces, you don't want to know about, about death and murder. But when you're living in a, a, a period of freedom fantastic do you know we, we can absorb all of this gory gory true crime why because it's escape it's escapism but there's n nothing escapist about uh waking up in the morning and looking at your neighbor's house and it's been blown to bits and you can see their body parts scattered in the back garden so um yeah <laughs> russian dora uh murdered on long acre over in covent garden i'm hoping to come and do this at some point dora was stabbed to death she was found partially clothed lying on the floor with a carving knife in her heart and an electrical flex around her neck that had been pl uh, pleated uh, police also found a fingerprint on the knife i'm really hoping to get to this episode um another one unfortunately this is another case that's held it's when was that uh almost 85 years ago was uh rita green uh black rita on uh, 42 rupert street uh rita was shot in the stomach and chest and was found in her flat she was fully dressed she died at charing cross hospital uh there are many theories as to her death whether she was a police informer um or um there are links between her and the Messina brothers. And I, this, again, was going to go into the Soho Strangler case. And I, I know your brains are probably fried from the Soho Strangler case because it was it's a complicated case. And there was a lot, lots of uh, red herrings and loose ends and th threads throughout the series that are kind of, kind of quite exciting. Um, I actually took out uh, big pieces about the Messina brothers and the Vassallo gang. And the Messina brothers... And the Vassallo gang were uh, Maltese um, gangs who actually took over from the French gang. So the 1930s, 1920s, 1930s, basically prostitution was ran, ran by the French gangs. Uh, by the mid-1930s, you got the, you got the Maltese factions who were turning up. They're quite bloody and ruthless. They're pretty much fighting and, and getting the, uh, the French gangs out. So people like Red Max, people like Roger Van, they were on their last legs. Yeah, the Maltese gangs were coming in. Um, you may think this is an old thing and it's like, uh, oh, well, that's how it used to be. Unfortunately not. It's it's now, it's the Albanian gangs who run the uh, prostitution rackets. Um, it's fascinating when you, when you live and work in and around Soho because um, you don't read a lot about it in the press. It's almost like it doesn't exist. But everyone in Soho knows knows they're there and you you see these black mercedes fleets of black mercedes kind of uh four by fours racing through the city they go right through the the um the uh, uh the traffic lights they don't give a crap it's it's the albanian gangs and there's nothing you can do about them it's kind of too powerful unfortunately or in the pocket of uh someone who knows i think it's more likely that isn't it um 
so we've got margaret cook as well uh 10th of november 1946 she was shot we did that episode about the guy who claimed uh that he'd murdered her i think it's unlikely that uh he did murder her we've had no update on that that has been almost five years now uh he had terminal cancer by that point he was in his late 80s i believe so he may not be alive anymore uh unfortunately the um uh, police file is no longer available it's been pushed back because of the p- potential court case that would have happened um december 13th 1944 evelyn hatton over on duke street in mayfair um she was a prostitute uh in and around piccadilly she was strangled to death her flat door was locked and she was found inside lying on her bed fully dressed in her outdoor clothes she had a silk um a kind of a silk scarf knotted and tied around her throat and her feet had been bound together uh, with a sheet from her bed. Her handbag had been rifled. Um, I'm still desperate to get this case done. This is one of the ones that I'm really interested in. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a problematic one because uh, the judge involved in the case made a couple of changes that are slightly controversial. Therefore, the file itself almost... almost (sighs) I'd love to know more about what it is. One day I will get to it. One day I will get that file and then I'll be able to tell you all about it. But I'm struggling with that one at the moment. Um, 29th. Don't forget, this is not all the prostitutes who've been murdered. This is just a small sample that we've got in and around the kind of the era. And me saying, why aren't they connected? Uh, 29th of July, 1942, Mary MacLeod uh, over on uh, Fleur de Lis Street in Stepney, East London. Uh, she was strangled to death, found lying in her be- bed, covered in an eider down, only her face being exposed. Uh, there were bloodstains on the pillow, um, and there were signs of a boot or a shoe had skidded through uh, the blood on the way out. Um, a gentleman called Thomas Bragg was charged with her murder but found not guilty on the trial judge's orders interesting we already have a murderer in murder mile called thomas bragg um 19th of may 1942 jean stafford over in bedford place in hoban now she wasn't a sex worker but she was strangled to death with her own summer dress her jaw had been broken and she'd been left naked on her bed except for her bra uh when the police searched the room they found there was no money and thought that robbery might be a motive see that's similar to the soho strangler case you've got um a, a, a punch to the face the jaw to un- make them unconscious uh the lady has been strangled using something of her own uh and then no money is found although how as mentioned in the episode how do you prove if a robbery has taken place do you know how, if someone looked at my wallet now they go oh my god he's been robbed there's no money in it but I haven't carried money like actual paper coin money since since well since lockdown since first lockdown and someone may go oh my god these oh they've taken all these credit cards but I don't own credit cards I only own one debit card that's all I own I don't I own I don't have loyalty cards so my 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 wallet is empty pretty much so it may look like I've got I've been robbed but I haven't been robbed it's just a, that's how i live my life uh, so it's it's so it's it's kind of fascinating in a way um into the 1950s um when i was doing a search for kind of more of the soho strangler like i did i did searches through all the newspapers search for soho strangler and came up with uh first of october 1952 in the daily herald a soho strangler who left fingerprints was being hunted by scotland yard last night he murdered here we go again an attractive blonde well she's attractive therefore that's the reason why she was murdered uh he murdered an attractive blonde in a flat in charlotte street soho now did you notice something that's wrong there for uh purists we will say charlotte street isn't in soho it's in fitzrovia fitzrovia you got soho then you cross over oxford street and then you go north that's fitzrovia they're two very distinct places but as you can see what they try and do is because because no one really knows fitzrovia it's like if you were to say to anyone in scotland or canada or whatever she was murdered in fitzrovia they go where Whereas if you say Soho, instantly you're thinking prostitutes, you're thinking red light district, you're thinking crime, corrupt, corruption, gangsters. Do you know, it's all there, isn't it? It's all very exciting. So, um, 
yeah, uh, this uh, lady, she had been strangled with her own pyjama cord and then been a heavy blow to the back of the head. Postmortem showed that the killing had taken place uh, just a couple of nights before. Um, as predicted in the newspapers, it said, Last night, two coloured men were being taken in for questioning. It was the early 1950s. It's, it's the start of the wind rush. It's the start of what would become uh, the race riots as well. So as mentioned in uh, Murder Mile, when we talk about villains of the day, you, you, when you look at the kind of villains in the press, you can kind of see if you go if you go mid 18, 1850s, you kind of got the Welsh. Sorry for the Welsh people, uh, but the Welsh people coming into Britain, taking take, coming into England, taking English jobs. It's like oh, the Welsh, right? And then the Irish come in, kind of the late eighteen uh, hundreds, and the Welsh are going oh, that's disgraceful. So are the British because the Irish are here. And then and then when you get to the fifties, it's Windrush, and then so that's the new villain and. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, 1930s is a kind of everyone going, oh, the Jews, although everyone seems to blame the Jews for everything since time immemorial. Uh, 1970s, you've got people going, oh, boo, the Asians. And then 1990s, you go, ah, oh, boo, the Eastern Europeans. And now we've uh, gone, now the Eastern Europeans are going, ah, oh, boo, the uh, Somalis. Do you know, there's, everybody has villains of their own era. So um, to 1950s, it was very much... Uh, inverted comma, commas oh a black man or that's as it's say a, a colored man um now even with this article as well so the daily news this was titled the pajama cord murder i'm i am hoping to do, cover this case at some point in murder mile again unfortunately this is one of those files that um every time i keep trying to get it out of the archives it is it is redacted to hell it's like it's not like i can just look at a couple of pages and go oh they've taken a couple of lines out of it this is the whole file is not there it's it's it keeps being put back but uh first of october 1952 the pajama cord murder you see the press are trying to make something out of it if you tag a line to it the uh the soho murders the soho strangler murders the Whitechapel murders jack the ripper this they tried with the pajama cord murder you need a kind of a quick line that kind of gets people's uh, memories to go ah yes pajama cord murder um underneath all the information at the bottom of the page they said five mysteries five five murders in the soho area since 1946 with a woman the victim in each case are unsolved they are Mrs. Fran Francis Mizzy, a 26-year-old, uh, strangled in her flat. That was uh, Wardour Street. Uh, Mrs. Margaret Cook, a prostitute aged 25, shot in a passage. That was Carnaby Street. Um, Mrs. Rita Barrett, black Rita, a prostitute aged 30, shot in a staircase. Uh, Mrs. Helen Friedman, Russian Dora, a prostitute aged 50, stabbed in a flat. Mrs. Rachel Fennick, Ginger Ray, prostitute aged 41, stabbed in her flat. So, even though... The press aren't saying these are definitely connected by by saying th these are all the other murders that you've don't know about instantly because we're an audience we go oh, i wonder if they're connected why because we want to make connections it might not be one killer it might be multiple killers it, as we know i think off the top of, sorry about that off the top of my head uh francis mizzy was murdered by her boyfriend who was a seaman uh as in a sailor not as in something that swims around in a man's testicles although you never know uh mrs margaret cook is still unsolved it was believed to be one of her punters uh, allegedly was meant to be that man in canada we don't know whether it was rita barrett there was meant to be a sighting of a man with a uh, an attache case and a hat who was seen although we don't know who he was so that oh rain's really coming down now uh so we don't know who that was um russian dora still unsolved uh, and Rachel Fennick, again, if you listen to that episode, I managed to pin it down to, hope you can hear me over the rain, I managed to pin it down to two people, one was a Maltese pimp, unlikely it was him, the other one was a, uh, a civil servant who was knighted by the king two years later, and therefore his in he was found uh, that night, two streets away, drunk couldn't remember where he was he was uh his uh, face was covered in blood he had key marks in his face and everyone always said that whenever ginger ray would get attacked like most prostitutes she was attacked regularly so she knew how to handle herself but she she also was smart enough to know that um 
because the police would dismiss her and say well you know you shouldn't be out you shouldn't be out tonight you shouldn't be prostituting uh, and would dismiss her information she would find a way to make sure that she could identify the man therefore she'd have her keys with her and she'd uh, scratch at his face uh, he had those same marks he was found in bed with a prostitute in Kilburn later that night although he denied it uh, the police interviewed him and because he was a civil servant and a very uh, respected and wealthy man who uh, two years later would be knighted they said uh, a direct quote I don't know why it's still in my head he was a man of good character and they let him go utterly baffling utterly baffling so yeah oh so um i mean this is just a snapshot of prostitute murders in and around the soho area pre the soho strangler murders post the soho, soho strangler murders there's lots and it, most of these ha haven't even been covered in uh, uh murder mile yet even today i, I was uh, covering a case of uh uh, uh polish joe Polish Joe, uh, which will be coming to um, Murder Mile soon as a two-parter. Um, interesting case. I'm not going to give away too 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 much, but again, murder of a prostitute in and around the local area. They haven't connected it to other prostitute murders. Could be connected, might not be connected. Most likely isn't connected. But this is the thing. Why do we connect them? Why do we feel that we have to connect them? Why is it that we only remember certain prostitutes if they're connected to a famous murderer? But everyone else, fuck them. Fuck them, we don't care. We don't care about their name. We don't care about their injuries. It's their life is not worth us remembering. No one's going to write books about them. But if they're connected to some, someone famous, suddenly we have to remember them. It's kind of tragic in a way. And I, I, know, I know that people will go, well, the reason why uh, we're interested in the serial killer is we want to bring kind of justice to the victim's lives. But that's not how you do it. The, the way you bring justice to the victim's lives is by researching their lives properly, telling their, their life story in full with compassion and as truthfully as po possible, d dismissing the serial killer and just going, look, he's clearly a coward. He's clearly an asshole. We don't need to care about him. But no one's going to do that. Why? Because people want people want excitement they want serial killers it's exciting you don't want to believe that a serial killer is oh you don't want to believe that um it's four independent murders by a series of dull tragic men who are complete cowards who have attacked a woman because they wanted to have sex with her they hadn't got enough money and therefore they're upset and drunk and felt that that was their only way out that's most likely to be the truth of it and uh that's most likely unfortunately why a lot of prostitutes get murdered through drunkenness and arrogance and also also by their pimps as well so it's one of those tragic stories that will keep going on for as long as there is prostitution and um it's pretty tragic so the only way through it is to ditch the myths stop creating monsters and treat the victims with respect. If you enjoyed that, there's more to come. Your regular episodes of Murder Mile will return on Thursday the 27th of April, or a few days earlier via Patreon.